It's another great day here at Recipe of the Day. So let's get started here. We have a fun show on tap for you today. And we are going to be talking about polenta today. Or is that maybe cornmeal? Or is that maybe grits? What are we going to be talking about today? We are talking about all three of those things today. And we are going to be discussing them in a moment. But we are going to be making chicken pot pie, chicken polenta pot pies today. And then we are also going to be making a dessert with grits, which um, I thought looked intriguing because um, everybody, you know, around here doesn't eat a lot of grits, but in the South we eat more grits uh, if you're uh, from, from the South. So I thought we would get started here. I've got the um, chicken going back here. I started it a little bit while I was waiting for you guys. So we've got the chicken browning. I have five chicken breasts, boneless chicken breasts I cut up into just pieces. And I made them fairly large, if you can see. But I don't like to have a pot pie that just has, you can't tell where the chicken is. So I made the pieces about one inch pieces. And so I've got the chicken going there. And I'm going to add in here um, the vegetables and let them get started here. And I have um, two, about two small onions. And I grated them. Because you know I don't like to bite into things and have a big chunk of onion. So I have the onions are grated and they are going in. And then I have four ribs of celery with some leaves chopped in there just for green. So we've got celery going in there. And then I also have um, four carrots here chopped, um, you know, chopped pot pie size so they can get going in there. So I'm going to let that start getting going with the chicken. Oh my gosh, it looks good already. It smells good already. And I'm going to let that keep going here. Of course, I'm using my Big Mama pan today. Got Big Mama working. Um, and while that is going, we're going to start our pie. While we're waiting for that to get going, I'm making chicken tarragon polenta pot pies to, uh, today. Laura. Hey Jill, how are you? Here we are. We are making a couple things. I'm going to talk about grits and cornmeal and polenta and what it all is here in a minute. Um, but right now I'm going to start here on the pie. So I've got the chicken going back there with the veg for the chicken pot pie base. And then I'm going to let that go for a minute. And while I do that, we're going to make the filling. Of course, I slaved over my pie crust right out of the freezer section. <laughs> And we're going to start here. So I am going to get the, pol the um, grits we're using for this. I've got polenta going for the pot pies, and we're going to use grits for this pie. So I have the water behind me is boiling, and I'm going to put my grits in here. So it's three quarters of a cup of water boiling with a pinch of salt, and I've got just a quarter cup of grits I'm going to put in there and blend it. And let that cook for just a couple of minutes because those are quick cooking grits, not like the polenta that takes a while, but the quick cooking grits are these. Hey, Instagram, we're using the grits for the dessert and the polenta for the pot pies. So that's what's going on. Hey, Nancy, anything special we should know about you today, Nancy? <laughs> okay. They're so little, I've never made only a quarter cup of grits, so I think it's going to cook very quickly. I'm going to turn that down because I get distracted on this side. So going into our pie, I am going to put in here in our, um, in our pie, because we're making a grits pie and we're making chicken tarragon polenta pot pie. So we're making two things with corn product today. Um, so here we go. I'm going to whisk together here the flour, the sugar, the eggs, and the buttermilk. So I've got two tablespoons of flour, pre-measured, because I get a little sidetracked. It's easier if it's measured. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. And then of course, I forgot the buttermilk, so hold on. <laughs> I try and get it all out. And sometimes I succeed in getting everything we need, and sometimes I don't. But look, I found buttermilk. Again, it was the last one, but I got it. So here we are. No, never fear. Dessert is here. <laughs> so 
So wait, this, oh, we'll get, get the answer. So I got sugar, flour, eggs, buttermilk, and vanilla. So let's do the eggs. Here we go. You guys missed me? We haven't figured out what our new schedule is going to be, but I thought we would check in with everyone this beautiful Saturday afternoon. I get inspired by so many recipes that I read. So it's always fun to make them for you guys. So then the buttermilk, how much do we need? Just a quarter cup. So let me grab a quarter cup here. Which, oh, look at that. From grits to buttermilk. So here we go, quarter cup. And I will whisk that together. I'm just gonna check on my grits because I think they're they are done. Yes. They are done. I'm gonna take them off the, the heat, but you see how quick the grits cook. They cook real quick. And I'll give my veg and chicken here a stir. Just to make sure it's coming along. Oh my gosh, this looks beautiful. Yes, it does. Oh, that one got away. You're jumping out of the pan. Okay. Oh my gosh. That looks good. Okay, back to the pie. I need another whisk here. I've got all my whisks out, but I'm using them. So let's just use, well, it only has cornmeal on it, and it's going in a grits pie. So we're just going to use the whisk I've got in front of me. What's everyone up to today on this beautiful Saturday? May Gray has avoided us today, which is very nice. Oh my gosh, this looks yummy. Have you ever made a grits pie? Have you ever heard of a grits pie? I don't know. I hadn't. And I love grits, all things grits. I am famous for my grits. Of course, I made those for you guys on Blunt, Brunch and Blame. Do you remember Brunch and Blame? We made my famous sausage grits. Okay, so that is mixed up here. I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla. Measured very carefully, like we like to measure things. About a teaspoon. And then I'm going to put a little bit of lemon zest just because I think this recipe sounded like it would be good. And you know, I'm so proud of my lemons because I grew it myself. Uh oh, there goes the whisk. Grew it myself. So I will put a little bit of lemon zest in there for fun and flavor. Okay. Yummy! Who has discovered a new recipe that you would like to share? Something new you've never made, like grits pie. Like so many of the things that we've made on the show that I have never made. Oh my gosh, smells good. Okay, since my whisk hit the floor, hang on. I will rinse that off real quick. Because I'm going to need my whisk to get it incorporated with the with our grits here. Oh my gosh, yummy! Make sure I got everything in there before I do do this. Blah blah blah. Okay, I do. So now we are going to stir this into our grits. Maybe I'll bring them over here. Hey Juanita, how are you? Susan, good to see you. Thanks for watching. We are making chicken tarragon polenta pot pies and we are making grits pie. We are making two things and we will talk about here in a minute the difference between cornmeal, polenta, and grits. Do you know the difference? Do you have questions about the difference? I have done my homework. <laughs> so here we go. I've got a whisk in this one too. Okay, so this is our pie filling and buttermilk, eggs, a little bit of flour, and we are gonna and sugar and I'm gonna stir this into my grits here. My grits are done. Juanita, you probably know about grits. You probably know all about grits. Juanita lives in Atlanta area. And so she is the southernmost girl I think we have on here live today. <laughs> you have to go back, Susan, and watch the replay to catch the dancing. <laughs> Okay, oh my gosh, this looks delish, but while I'm doing this, 
I'm going to get our sauce go going back here for our for our pot pie. So I'm going to push here. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Of course, lemon zest makes everything smell good. So we've got our veg and our carrots. Oh my gosh, they are jumping out of the pan today. I don't know what the deal is, but they are trying to get away. You're not going to get away today. Okay, I'm going to make the sauce here right in the side of the pan. So I've got about half a stick of butter going in. We're making the sauce for our pot pie. And I'm going to put um, a couple tablespoons. I'm not going to put all this because first I want to see what it's going to do here. Kind of a texture thing with the sauce. I'm going to put a little flour in here because you definitely want to get the flour taste out of it, out of your flour when you're making a sauce like this. So I'm going to get the butter melted here and mix it into to the flour and make a roux. I just on the side of the pan. I push the veg and the chicken, I'm going to use it all, to the side. And so I've got the roux going here. So let that flour cook for a minute to get, because you want that flour taste to be out of your roux for sure. So get that going here. Oh my gosh, deep brown color. And you don't want anything to taste like raw flour. So I'm getting that going. And look, I caught a piece of chicken. I caught him in the birdcage. <laughs> mine, mine. And I'm going to get him out of the birdcage, but let's see if I can get him out without using my hands. It's a trick. It's a game. Got it. He's out. Okay, so then we're going to put some chicken stock. Um, my my uh, tarragon's going to fall down. Hey, Seal, Annette, Rhonda, how are you? I know, my big mama. I love my cast iron skillets. I have several, and I love them. Plus, I don't think we get enough iron in our diet, so you're supposedly, when you cook in a cast iron skillet, um, you get more iron in your food, so I think that's another good reason to use cast iron. Okay, so let's see how much I'm putting in here. And I have all my ingredients here on top of my recipe I'm trying to read, but here we go. Um, this said I'm going to put about three cups of stock in here while we make sauce. We're making polenta chicken, chicken polenta pot pies. And we're making grits pie. But I'm going to get some stock going in here with our flour and get it mixed in. Oh, I'm just going to use it all. Why not? I'm here. Let's use it all. Why not? Okay. So we will let that thicken up a little bit while we finish up our pie and get our pie in the oven. Oh my gosh. I caught him. I caught him again. Caught him in the cage. Got him. Hey, Rachel, I heard you caught a bird. I saw your post that you guys caught a bird out in public and you brought him home. <laughs> And you just happen to have a big bird cage in your attic. <laughs> oh man, okay, I'm gonna taste this. So let's see before I put it in my pie shell and see what it's gonna taste like. Hey Melissa, how are you? Okay, let's see. Oh my goodness, that's delish, delish, delish. Okay, that's going in and then that's going in the oven. So this is our grits pie. I've got my pie shell that I slaved over straight out of the freezer. And in we go. This is our pie filling. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's like filled it perfect. Who knew? Who knew that those recipes just work perfect? Who knew? So that is going to go. I have the oven on 325. And it is ready to go. So let's put the pie in. It takes 30 to 35 minutes to bake our lovely, basically a custard grits lemon pie. Yum! And we will put that in there, set the timer so I don't get talking and forget it. Um, and then to serve that, once it's done, let it out, take it out the oven, I'll let it cool. And then I'm going to serve it with whipped cream, of course, homemade whipped cream. Um, and then blackberries. I found some beautiful organic blackberries at the farmer's market this morning. So I'm going to use, serve it with fresh whipped cream and blackberries on top of that grits pie. Oh, yum! Okay, 
back to our back to our regularly scheduled main dish programming here. We are going to keep going on our polenta. So polenta. Here we go. I have never done it like this, but I did it like this so I could tell you. I just made this polenta in the microwave. So instead of standing at the stove and stirring polenta like you need to, um, I just did it in the microwave. Eight minutes, take it out, stir it, three minutes more, and boom, it is polenta. And it looks pretty dang the right consistency. So again, I need my whisk, hold on. Here we go. And you can see it's almost perfect consistency. Now it's sitting, it's been out for just a couple of minutes, but this is the topping for our pot pie. So, um, in this is just chicken stock and polenta and a little bit, bit of salt, and it went in the microwave, covered, and it came out like perfect. So instead of 30 to 40 minutes on the stove stirring, the microwave trick looks like it worked great. So now we are going to put into this, into our polenta, um, I'm going to put a little bit of butter, and then I'm going to put the Gruyere. So if anyone else out there loves Gruyere cheese like I do, it's what they make um, uh, fondue from. Cheese fondue, Gruyere. Yummy! So I've got Gruyere all grated here and ready to go, and I'm putting that in. This is the top of our pot pie. So I'm putting the cheese in. Oh my goodness. I'm going to save a little bit to put on top just for a garnish. And I'm going to stir that in. And because I didn't, I would have cooked this with a little bit of cream if I was cooking it on the stove. But since I did it in the microwave, I wasn't sure um, how, if the cream would make it through eight minutes in the microwave. And my microwave is like nuclear. So I'm just going to put a little bit of cream here, um, in here with the cheese because I didn't want to boil it. Now if I was cooking it on, on the stove, you could have done it because you're standing there and you're stirring it. But I wasn't going to be inside the microwave stirring it. So here we go. So how easy is that? And now that I have made it in the microwave to test it out for you guys, I can tell you that's the way to make polenta for sure. That's the way. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's taste that while well, I get another spoon. Okay, another spoon since we're going to give this to the neighbors. Wouldn't want to pollute it. Oh. That is so yummy. The texture is perfect. Because um, sometimes with polenta, even when you stir it and stir it, it's a crapshoot on what, <laughs> whether it's going to turn out. Um, microwave, way to go. That needs, for my taste, it needs some pepper. So I'm going to put some pepper in there. We will give our pot pie filling here a stir while we are over here. Oh my goodness, this looks delish. Let that thicken up while we're talking, while we're chatting away here. Okay. I know you probably shouldn't put, pep put pepper in this because it's going to put black flakes all in our topping. In the microwave. Oh, because Rhonda. <laughs> I read the bag. <laughs> I was getting ready to put all this on the stove and stir it and get it going because it takes about 30 minutes before you guys got here. I'm like, wait a minute, microwave polenta. Let's try that. <laughs> so that's this is the brand that you can usually find of the polenta, this pheasant. So get some our pepper going in here. I'm sure it's going to need more for my taste. Even though it has black flakes, it'll it'll taste good. How cool was that grits pie? I just thought that recipe was so cool, and I had never even heard of such a thing. So, yum. Okay, so our topping here is ready to go with our cheese, a little bit of cream. I put salt in the chicken stock when I cooked it, so it has plenty of salt. And then it will go, we're going to create one. I'm going to make one here. You can also make individual ones. So we can have individual pot pie, or I'm going to make a family size pot pie, and I'm probably going to be able to make more than that because I have a lot of chicken going behind me. So let's see here. It's getting thick here, our sauce. Just going to let that keep going. It's thickening up nice though. Oh my gosh, looks good. 
Like I said, I cut the chicken into big chunks because I don't like to have a pot pie and you wonder if there's any chicken. So I made the chicken chunks nice and big. So let that keep going away. Hey Susan, Kelly, how are you guys? Welcome. We are cooking away here. Um, I will tell you right now about the difference between our different things I have here. So Instagram, you can see Instagram. We have grits. We have polenta, and we have cornmeal. So the question would be, what is the difference? Well, you know I love grits, and I've cooked them all different ways. And this is polenta, and then the cornmeal. There we go. Look, I got them all on the Instagram screen. How about that? Yay me! So if you believe everything you read on the internet, which I, my professional advice is, you don't, there is conflicting data on the internet about the difference between these things, um, but I will just kind of run through a couple of these and tell you about them. So technically, polenta is not a cornmeal. It's not one of these ingredients. Polenta is a dish. It's actually a dish. The term polenta refers to the Italian preparation of a variety of grains um, known in northern Italy as polenta taranga. Taranha, maybe. Of course, I took Italian in college, and you can see it didn't stick. Between the Spanish, growing up in California and the Spanish, and then deciding to take Italian in college, because I thought it would be, I don't know what, romantic, uh, I just messed them both up, my Italian and my Spanish. The Spanish overtook the Italian. Um, but it's tr traditionally made out of a kind of corn that's grown in Italy that is called auto file or auto file. It's probably file in Italian, which means it's a variety of corn called eight row flint. So that's why they call it auto file. Eight row is the kind of corn they use to make polenta. And then grits, grits is actually dried hominy that they grind, and that's what makes that um, grits. And then cornmeal, of course, is just ground cornmeal. So if you're going to want to substitute one for the other, the way you can substitute is use grits for polenta if you want to, but not the other way around. Now you could use cornmeal, it's just gonna be coarser, it's just gonna be very coarse. So um, that's the difference. Now um, I'm gonna tell you here, cornmeal, there's different types of cornmeal, water ground, all stone ground. Most of our cornmeal is done, in, of course, in the factories now. Um, but that's, uh, then masa harina is, that they use for like um, tamales is cornmeal made from corn kernels that have been cooked first in lime water. So that's the difference from masa harina, which I didn't have any for our demo here, but that's what it is. Um, so uh, I had a couple. Uh, anything else I want to tell you about grits? Grits, on the other hand, are similar to cornmeal, tend to be made from hominy, like I said, um, and they're made from different kinds of varieties of corn, and the difference is the starch content. So they are similar but different, but the one, if you want to substitute that you can, is really use grits if you're trying to make something with polenta, or if you don't want to stand and stir and stir and stir, then um, I would advise using grits, because these are quick cooking grits, now they do have quick cooking polenta, but I just wouldn't go that route. If you're gonna to go to the trouble to make it, just go to the trouble to make it. And now that I have um, figured out the microwave way to do polenta, game changer. So definitely do it that way. So let me go back to our, our originally scheduled programming of the chicken tarragon pot pie filling I've got going back here. Of course, here's some peas we're gonna use for our pot pie. And oh my gosh, our sauce is getting nice and thick back here. Oh my gosh, yummy. So I'm gonna add the rest of the yumminess that's going into this. And that would be fresh tarragon going in, which they didn't have today. The basil today at the farmer's market was unbelievable. The basil and the tomatoes, oh my goodness, the basil though. The whole farmer's market smelled like basil. It was so awesome. They were amazing, the basil. Um, and then I'm going to put some Dijon mustard in here. Let's see how much. I'm just going to put a couple of tablespoons. Of course, my favorite going in here. 
Pardon me, but do you have any gray poupon? The best. I love it. Gary likes yellow, but I like gray poupon, so we always have both. Okay. Mm, yum. Okay, so we got our tarragon and our mustard. And this is looking yummo. We'll let that go for a minute more, and then we are going to assemble this deliciousness. Yes, we are. Oh my gosh. Do you guys love the smell of tarragon? It just has that special smell that is so yummy. I need to taste that for salt. And see, we have enough salt in there. I say, say hi to Erica. I say hi, Susan. Oh, I know fancy with the lessons. Well, I just thought, I didn't know the difference. It was really why I'm telling you, so I looked it up. Okay, so let's see how this tastes. Oh, yeah, two thumbs up. That is delicious. That has enough salt. So I'm going to put a few peas in there for greens. I'm getting ready to assemble it, and I'm going to have more that's going to fit in our dish here, but I'm going to show you. We can make this Instagram in the frame here. We can make it. I'm going to make a family size, go into the neighbors, and I'm going to make an individual one. I'm going to make a couple of individual ones, depending on how much chicken we've got, but let me put the peas in here, because what's a pot pie without peas, for heaven's sakes? We need to have peas. Yes, we do. So, I don't know. I'm going to put, oh, handful, a handful, about, of peas. And they're frozen, so we'll just let those get in there for a second. And then we're going to assemble this loveliness. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Turn that up a little bit. Oh my gosh, you guys, wait till you see this yumminess. And I am going to need something to scoop it out in a, some kind of a reasonably delicate way. <laughs> oh yeah? Yummo? Rhonda baby? Oh my goodness. I'm going to get my trivet out here. Okay, get it out. We're just going to use that. Okay, we'll bring Big Mama over here. We're ready to assemble this. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Ready? Ah! Big Mama coming in for our pot pie assembly. Oh my gosh. Can you see how yummy that looks? Hold on. Let me pull it back. The stage director is telling me to pull it back, so I'm pulling it back. Better? Okay. Oh, my apron! Let me tell you about my apron! Thank you, Ke uh, Kelly. Oh, and my sister. So, one of my dear friends from high school who's been watching, she lives in Colorado, been watching this. She was my roommate in college. She all these cute ones. Isn't this cute? And she sent me a dozen of like a standard apron, all colors, 12 colors. And then she sent me um, four of these little fancy little aprons. Aren't they cute? It was so nice. I was so excited. So, she thought I needed an apron, so she sent them. I also have, I haven't worn yet, I'll show you guys, another dear girlfriend who made me shirts that say recipes in real estate. They have our real estate logo on the back and it says, I'm dancing in my kitchen. So dancing in my kitchen on the front and recipes in real estate and our GaryandLisa.com logo on the back. So how cute is that? So how fun. I'm getting swag from the audience. It's awesome. So yes, this apron is from an audience member and I have several more to show you that she sent so very cute okay so um, here we go look at how yummy this looks you guys I mean yeah okay so I'm gonna fill up our dish here and this is just a regular pie dish Pyrex pie dish and we're gonna get the filling going here and I'm gonna have enough for more than one pie dish let me get enough liquid in here. Oh my gosh. Look at how yummy this looks. I'll move Big, Mo Big Mama here so you can see me put the polenta on there. I don't know how much I need. I think that's enough because my polenta is not going to fit in here, gang. And I'm going to do an individual one here too. So I got a baby one. So let's get all the things. Some peas and carrots. How do you like your peas and carrots? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yum! It is very hot. So let me take him away here. Take Big Mama away. Hold on. 
Uh, back, back to the back, and here we go. We're gonna top it. Now I was gonna get all fancy pants and get a piping bag and pipe it on here and make it all fancy, but yeah, yeah, I didn't. I don't think the piping bag is really up my skill set. I would need to practice that before I did it in front of you guys, <laughs> which I didn't do. So now I'm gonna get, um, oh my gosh, you know how yummy this looks, Instagram, can you see? I need my offset spatula. So hang on, again, when I had all my tools I needed in front of me, offset spreading spatula, you guys see? It has a little dent there and it's nice and flat so you can get things spread. And I am gonna put our topping on this. Stuck in the cage. We got cornmeal stuck in the cage here. <laughs> so here we go. Top it with this lovely, our polenta that of course we learned, you can make it in the microwave, it turns out perfect. And Gruyere cheese in here. And there is our topping. So we have tarragon, chicken, polenta, pot pie here. Oh my goodness, how yummy does this look? Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is a keeper, I can tell already. All these new things that I have made for you guys, but they're new to us too. I don't think I've ever made a pot pie, but it is really not hard and yummy. Fill in my holes here. Make sure I got my topping all over here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's probably a more graceful way to do this, but I'm just doing it. Oh my goodness. And then we're going to put that in the oven and let it get under the broiler and get all nice and brown. Just going to put a little cheese on top. Really just for pretty. Because pretty is important too. And then we are ready to eat that. Uh, the neighbors will put it in the oven and cook it and warm it up again and put it under the broiler for just a few minutes till it gets done and bingo! Tarragon, chicken, polenta, pot pies right there. Yum! And I'm gonna do a little, we'll top our little baby one. So you can do these in ramekins if you have them that are oven safe and you can do individuals too. So let's do an indiv individual just for fun. And put the little topping on there. Oh my gosh. Cute as that. But I didn't think you guys wanted to sit and watch me make like a dozen pot pies. So there's the individual size or the regular pie plate size. And there we have it. Our pot pies. And then we made grits dessert pie, which is in the oven. And I will do our birthday shout out and our birthday girl happens to be on watching today. Our birthday girl is Nancy Willis. Happy birthday to you. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. What are you doing today to celebrate? What's happening in Bakersfield? That we are still locked up. I don't know what you can do, but I'm sure you are figuring out something fun. And then we had a couple, oh wait, hold on. Since I haven't done this every day, we have a couple more. Michelle Mueller, my good friend, my mom's client, my mom's real estate client from the Bay Area. It was her birthday yesterday, so happy birthday, Michelle, and thank you so much for watching the show. I love seeing you guys all here. It's the most fun part. And then Lori Stevenson, it was your birthday yesterday also, so happy birthday to Lori. So hope you guys had a great day doing something fun. So there's our birthday shout outs. And then our giveaway for today is, hey Terry, nice to talk to you this morning. Um, oh, I fixed my hair. Um, I have our giveaway today. I am giving away today a portable travel chess set. So if you don't know how to play chess, you have time to learn because that is the season that we are in. So I have two of these really cool portable chess sets and we will draw for our winner. It has been so fun delivering these and seeing all you guys. I love it. We love our people. Um, if you have liked or commented on these cooking videos, you are in the bowl. So today it's a chess set. So maybe your kids, you can entertain your kids with a new toy or learn yourself. And that would be Barbara Hinton. Barbara Hinton, you've won the chess set. So you can play chess if you know how or learn how. 
get Randy to, to, you guys can learn how to play chess. They're our neighbors too. Oh, and then Erica, okay, er uh, Erica, <laughs> you're in here, I swear, is Wendy Warwar. Wendy Warwar, you are the winner of our other chess set, so you, the boys, can play chess, and maybe you know how. I don't know how, but um, I could learn too. But I'm giving you guys the portable chess set, so that is the prize today. So thank you so much for watching. This has been so fun. Remember, there's only two things you can control your effort and your attitude, so pick a good one. And by this time, if you know someone who lives alone, um, please give them a call, pick up the phone and call them, because uh, I'm sure people are going crazy. People are going crazy that are at home with kids, and people are, I'm sure, are going crazy that are at home alone. So if you know someone, just pick up the phone, reach out, call them, and just tell them that you're thinking about them. So we love you guys. Um, all these videos, Videos are available on our YouTube channel at Ventura Real Estate, and I will put the recipes in there, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. I am working on maybe doing a um, Memorial Day barbecue series next week with great recipes for your Memorial Day barbecue. So if you have any ideas for that, um, send them in, post them, send them to me, send me texts. And of course, I love the swag. I'm getting swag now. I love it. Swag in the mail. So that's always fun. All right, love you guys. We will talk to you soon, and I will post a picture here of our polenta pot pie once it gets browned up, and it was easy and yummy, and the grits pie, I can smell it. It smells good. It's cooking up in the oven, so we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.